Hey guys, I'm John with uh, Mad Cop Exotics, and today I'm going to be talking about Bearded Dragon Care. Um, first off, you need to know your enclosure size and uh, picking out your Bearded Dragon. Now, when you get a Bearded Dragon, try to make sure that they uh, look very healthy, that they've got a little belly on them, um, and that their enclosure that at your pet store, local pet store, wherever you go, that they have food and water readily available in their cage. Um, and that there's not too many crickets in the cage as well. Um, and that it's clean. You want to make sure your enclosures are very clean with your babies. Um, the best size for a baby up to... And a baby is normally about this big, which is anywhere from 3 inches to 5 inches. Um, you want to stay away from too small just because those can be hatchlings and you could have an issue with having a hatchling at home. Um, if you would like a hatchling, go ahead. But be... Uh, extra careful and make sure that they're eating properly. Um, you want to go with a 20 gallon to 40 gallon for a baby. A 40 gallon is not too big for them. They do like to roam around quite a bit. Um, once they get to 10 or 12 inches, you do want to bump them up to a 40 gallon breeder tank. And behind me, right here, is a 40 gallon breeder tank. And in this tank is Ozzy, my 12 year old bearded dragon. Um, and this is the perfect size for an adult. You can go larger. And a pair can also go in a 40 gallon breeder. That means you can get a male and a female or two females and put in the breeder in a 40 gallon breeder tank. You do not want to put two males together though just because they can fight and hurt each other and possibly end up with a death of one or both of your bearded dragons. Um, now we're going to go with lighting. With your lighting you need a heat light um, where it's either a UVA heat light and a separate UVB bulb, or you can get two in one, and those are the Sun Glow UVB bulbs um, and heat bulbs, which is what I have over my bearded dragon. Um, so he has one bulb, and these are made by Exoterra, and there might be a couple other companies out there. These run around anywhere from fifty to eighty dollars, depending on your area or region. Um, and you want to make sure that your lamp is rated for at least 250 watts. Um, now, we're going to be talking about extra heat. If, it, if your room gets below 70 degrees or so where you keep your bearded dragon, you might want to go with a night light or even a heat pad. You do not want to get heat rocks though because bearded dragons on their bellies, they're very sensitive to heat and can be burnt and also they do not feel heat on their bellies so they can easily get burnt and not even realize that it's happening. And you can wake up the next day or you can even see them the next day that see that you have a dead bearded dragon, which is rather sad. Um, but with the heat pad, you want to put that underneath the entire tank. Do not put it in your substrate or um, underneath your reptile carpet or tile, whatever you use. Um, you want to put that underneath the tank and make sure that it's secured to the bottom of the tank and that it's not going to be burning anything underneath if it gets too hot. Um, your heat pad, you, where you should, what you should be able to do is put your hand under a little bit of your substrate and feel some warmth, and that will keep them warm at night. Or, what you can also go with is a red bulb for at night. You want to use a light that produces no um, visible light at all whatsoever, because um, this can keep your bearded dragon awake at night. Um, and you want to make sure that that is a lower watt heat bulb so it doesn't keep them at around 90 degrees during the day. With, also with heating, you want to make sure that your heat spot, which is on your one or the other side of your tank, that you have your heat spot and that on your log or your hide or your rock, whatever you have them under the heat bulb, that it's anywhere from 90 to 100 degrees. You do not want it too hot or too cold. And the reason why you have this is because reptiles are cold-blooded. Mammals, we create our own heat. We can, we can create our own heat and even 30 degrees or even lower than that. Um, and heat is a vital thing for digestion. Whenever your bearded dragon is too cold, he can't digest properly. Um, or if it's too hot, cannot digest properly. So they want the right degree so they can be able to pass whatever is going through their body and that it can actually give them some nutrition as well. Um, now I'm going to put this, this hide under his heat light. And most of the day your bearded dragon is going to be sitting right under that heat light. Unless if he gets too warm, he'll move somewhere else. Or if he's drinking water or getting something to eat, he'll move somewhere else. 
or could even go under his hide. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is substrate. Now with substrate, this is something that uh, is very controversial. Most people want to go with something that has no possible way of them eating anything at all whatsoever um, in their substrate. What you want to stay away from for sure is sand or anything that keeps moist um, or anything that is uh, any kind of mulch or anything like that. Do not put your bearded dragons on this. The reason why is they are a desert type animal, but they if, if you have them in sand, they can eat this and it will cause impaction. Now impaction is basically when you cannot pass whatever is in your body and it builds up into some type of, of a rock or something like that in their stomach and it can eventually kill your bearded dragon. Um, and it, if it doesn't kill it, it will be costing you quite a bit in vet trips um, to be able to you know, fix your bearded dragon and, and where he is able to pass anything that is in his system. Um, now, what you will also need to watch out for is if you do, what, what I use in my tanks is walnut grinds, and you can get this at any, most pet stores um, in the U.S. and I believe in Canada. I'm not exactly sure about any European countries, um, but you can order this online. Um, but what you want to do is, if you use a substrate that's a loose substrate, you want to make sure you have two to three inches or so. Um, and more if your bearded dragon is a digger. Now I got some bearded dragons that are above me up here that you can't see right now, but the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they have about four inches because they just like to dig around quite often and they throw their stuff everywhere. Um, Ozzy just, he kind of chills out a lot of time and he moves rather slowly since he's older, so I have a little bit less substrate in with him. Um, other uh, type of linings for your bearded dragon you can use is uh, newspaper, but you want to use that as not as uh, shredded because they can eat it and that will also cause infection. Um, you can use tile, you can use slate. If you use slate though, you want to make sure that it's not getting too hot um, because this can also burn the bellies of your bearded dragons. Um, and you can also use reptile carpet. I stay away from reptile carpet. I know a lot of people like this stuff, but it just seems to get very dirty for me and I have to clean it at least twice a week because bearded dragons do take the rather large uh, dumps, I guess whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it's uh, it gets dirty pretty quick. Um, walnut grinds, you want to be careful though of that your bearded dragon is not eating them because uh, if they eat it, it can cause impaction, but it is easier to pass than sand. Um, Ozzy does not eat any of it. He picks his crickets up right off the top and he's fine. Um, some bearded dragons just like to eat it. They'll get a mouthful and just munch it down. Some of them are just goofy that way. Um, next thing I'll talk about is the best substrate to put your babies on. You do not want to use walnut grinds for babies. Um, you can use it if you are watching them and being very careful with it that they're not eating it. But the best thing to do is really just a flat piece of newspaper, tile, or uh, slate. Um, and the, it's for a couple reasons. Whenever you have a baby, you have normally if you're hatching eggs, you have quite a few babies, and uh, you want to be able to monitor their poop. Um, and make sure that it's a solid piece that has a urate, and a urate is the white and yellow part. Um, you don't want to make sure it's not runny or anything like that. And in walnut grinds, since they're so tiny of poos, you won't be able to see them very well. Um, also, it, it's just safer on the bearded dragons themselves. Um, next thing we're going to be talking about is feeding. I feed my bearded dragons greens, but this makes up about 20 to 30 percent of their diet. Um, so you want to make sure that you're feeding them crickets or dubia cockroaches. Um, dubia cockroaches are illegal in some states, not here in Illinois where I am from, and uh, they can be expensive. You want to make sure you get a breeding colony, or if you have just one bearded dragon, um, it can be expensive to feed with just dubia cockroaches. So crickets are probably your best bet, and with crickets, you're going to want to dust them with calcium and with vitamins. Um, I'm going to grab this real quick. I have calcium sitting up here and vitamins. Okay, so with calcium, 
you're going to be using this on your crickets every day of the week, except the day that you use the vitamins. Um, the vitamins you do once a week, and that's what I do. Some people do it every other week, um, and that's fine. Um, but you do want to make sure you're, you are giving them some vitamins. Um, but the calcium and the vitamins, the way that you can do this, is I actually sprinkle a little bit on top of my cricket food. Um, that's for my actual crickets. And I will take the bag of a bag of crickets or some type of container, and I put the calcium, shake a little bit in there, and then take them, stir them up, shake them around, whatever you want to do, and cover. Make sure their bodies are covered in a good layer of this uh, calcium. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. My uh, camera ran out of memory. And I had to cut the video a little bit short, but I'm going to finish up the video with talking about behavior and uh, who these little guys are greatest for. Um, bearded dragons can be a pet for really anybody. Um, you do want to stay away from younger children owning them just because of the possibility of getting salmonella poisoning. Um, this is pretty much with all reptiles and amphibians, you can get salmonella poisoning. They uh, the bearded dragons, if they are in captivity long enough and you uh, keep your stuff very clean, it's more towards the unlikely side that they do carry salmonella. So some reptiles actually do not carry salmonella if they are very clean. Um, also with bearded dragons, their behavior is actually pretty cool. They will uh, bob their heads, as you can see up here, this big male is bobbing his head, and they will turn a little bit black under their beards on their beards. They also will, their beards will get very black. They can get almost charcoal black or even as black as this frame up here you can see. Um, and also with the females, this is my female up here, but she's not doing it right now and she doesn't do it very often, but they will wave their arms in a circular motion. And I'll sh explain that right now. Uh, sorry for zooming in and out, I'm just trying to get you a better view of my beardies but they'll take their first arm or one or the other and they will wave it in a circular motion and then stop and then take the other one and wave it in a circular motion and then stop or actually it'd be the other way Rob <laughs> um, they also are sometimes they'll get spurts of energy where they just are completely rambunctious and will run back and forth in their tank and then most of the time they can be just sitting on their log under their heat spot catching some rays uh, with my female up here, she will actually get up in her water bowl, stand on her hind feet up here, and have her head up here, and start scratching up at the wall, and just acting like she just wants to get out. Um, and this is normally in the evening she does this after she eats. It's pretty funny. But she's a, she's a beautiful girl, but she loves making a huge mess of the tank, as you can see there's... Walnut grind splashed up here from the water. The water dish I changed about half an hour ago. There's all kinds of marks all over the place. And just telling you, I don't. I normally keep my stuff very clean. This is only in two days. She gets that that dirty. She just loves running on the glass. You're crazy. <laughs> She's got some pretty orange colors on her too. Bearded dragons can come in all kinds of different colors and different sizes. So you can see this male's pretty big, and then Ozzy down here is. A little smaller. Now Ozzy's 12 years old as I said earlier but this guy up here is only two years old. Um, there's all kinds of morphs as I said different colors you can get some that are also called leatherbacks where even all these spines on them are gone and pretty much their back is like leather rather than scaly um, and then uh, this, or actually, let me say this, my female bearded dragon is half leatherback, and so is Ozzy down here, and she's actually gravid with his eggs, so I could be getting some leatherbacks out of them, and that would be pretty cool, I think, so. But anyway, if you guys like this video, please click like. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave me a comment below or send me a personal message, whatever you want to do. Um, and if you think that this video is good and you want to check out some of my other ones, you can subscribe to me and check out my other videos. So I'll see you guys later on YouTube. Peace out.